Hi, this is Kim from KimberlyKohler.com and today I have a new tutorial for you. So, have you ever seen a cairn? So, what is that? So, it's a, if you've ever been hiking and you see this pile of rocks, that's what a cairn is. And um, they have their start in prehistoric times. However, more recently, I think people have been using it more as an artistic endeavor. They kind of look cool, but the thing is, they're actually really bad for the environment. So they can cause erosions on shorelines and damage ecosystems and soil systems. And recently, I even saw that the uh, National Park Service was asking that if people saw them in their parks to just knock them over. Um, so we don't want to do that anymore, but I still think they look cool. So I thought that we could maybe take a carn as inspiration to make a pendant. Um, so in this tutorial, we're going to be using some gemstone chunks, or you can use gemstone chips. So there's the smaller ones, and that will make like a cuter little small dainty pendant, or you can even use this to make earrings. And I'm also going to show you how to make a paddle head pin to kind of give it a real nice sleek look. So let's get started. Okay, so to make this Karen pendant, I'm using these gemstone chips. I'm going to be using 18 gauge half hard round wire. I'm using para wire, which I usually use. I'm using 18 gauge in this case, which is a little bit thicker. You want to kind of use the thickest wire that will fit through your beads. I mentioned the gemstone chips. I made a pendant with the chips, which are much smaller than this. I just used the regular 20 gauge wire for that one. You are going to want your normal wire cutters, round nose pliers, bent nose pliers, or any other chain nose pliers. Um, you'll need your chain nose pliers and then like a second pair of pliers. So I like to use bent nose pliers. It's to make the wire wrapped loop. And also for this uh, tutorial, this jewelry project, we are going to be using a um, metal block or if you have an anvil, however you do your hammering, and then a chasing hammer. This is a paddle head pin we're making to put these on. This type of hammer will actually flatten out the wire. And you're also going to want a jewelry file. Okay, let's get started. Okay, we are going to start by cutting a piece of wire that is a couple inches longer than our um, pile of gemstone chips is going to be. So we're going to just cut that off and then we're just going to, I'm going to move to a different surface because we're going to do some hammering. Okay, so I have this big block here. I also have a tiny one. Either one is fine. It doesn't matter what you use. And what we're going to do is just on the end, we're going to flatten this wire. So it's going to flatten it and then spread it um, so that it will actually hold the beads on it. So um, I'm not going to talk while I'm hammering, but basically we're just going to hammer it with this chasing hammer until it is flat enough to hold the bead on. Now basically I'm just going to double check it with one of my beads. Okay. Nope. I'm going to go a little bit longer. And also it's good to like hold just the part you're hammering on the block. Um, and then the rest of it kind of off. So it's a little bit easier to keep track of what you're doing. Here we go. Check this again. Now we got it. So that is good. Okay, so now you might notice that your end is a little bit 
I don't know, kind of pokey and sharp. And that's why we are going to use our um, file to sand it down. I like to make it so it's kind of rounded off. And um, so we'll do that. This gives me the heebie-jeebies to listen to. So I'm going to turn off the sound while I do this. So we got that, it's pretty good. And now we get to decide how we'd like our beads to be stacked on our pendant. You can play around with this too. And I find these are often uh, very oddly drilled. So it's not super even. So I don't know. This one, this looks weird. I'm going to try it again. I might flip this over first. Sometimes some of them are a little bit more flat that might go together better. This is kind of where you get to have your little fun. I guess the good part about this, as opposed to an actual cairn, is that um, it's going to stay together no matter how you stack it. Okay. I'm going to stop where I am there. I'm pretty satisfied with that. And so we're going to make a wire wrapped loop at the top. So I'm using my round nose pliers. I'm holding the wire about um, about a quarter of an inch above the beads. Actually, it's a little more than that in this case. Um, when the wire is a little thicker, you might want to give it a little more space. So usually with like 20 gauge, I'll do a quarter of an inch. I wouldn't say this is a half of an inch, but it's a little bit more than a quarter. Then you're just going to pull the wire down and around. So we're going around one barrel of our round nose pliers. And then I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers. And so that loop is kind of off to the side. I'm going to hold my chain nose pliers. I'm going to go around once. As I go around, I am just going to straighten out that loop. So it's straight above, centered in the middle of the beads and the wire there. And then I like to change hands, grab my bent nose pliers, and then we're going to go around a couple more times. And just try to keep your wraps close together and straight. And then we're just going to cut off the excess, making a flush cut. So you're just using the back or the flat part of the wire cutters toward what you're leaving behind. And then I'm going to go back with my um, chain nose pliers and just make sure the end is not poking out. And there we have it. So now you can just add a chain or a cord of your choosing. I'm just going to use this cotton cord I made. There's a tutorial on my blog on how to make one. It's pretty simple. And now we just have this cute cairn necklace, just kind of our stacked beads here, and we can take our inspiration without actually, you know, harming the environment. So if you like this tutorial, you want to learn more about wire wrapping, you're probably going to love my Wire Wrapping for Beginners e-course. I teach you all the different components to get you started with wire wrapping, and then I give you recipes to make jewelry. So basically, the components are the ingredients. You can switch out ingredients to make each piece more personalized for yourself. So if you want to check out that class, you can just click the link below, and it will take you there. You can learn more about it and sign up there. I 
so much appreciate you watching this video and if you liked it I hope you'll hit the thumbs up if you want to subscribe you hit the bell and then you'll get every video in your feed that I release and I really appreciate it have a great day I'll see you next time